why are you putting up with that stuff? Why are you putting up with mood swings? Like what's, what's going on? Hi, this is Tony Henderson Mayers, television, radio, relationship expert, author, and entrepreneur known as Wise Courtship all over social media because of my book with a three-step system that will help you determine the true character and the true intent of your love interest. Wise Courtship is not just a book, it's wisdom, it's guidance. It's what I call the Wise Courtship philosophy. So anytime you um, see me on stage, anytime you see me on television, hear me on the radio, or even get my book book, you just subscribe to the Wise Courtship Philosophy, and all the philosophy is is individuals who are committed to having whole relationships in their romances, their families, their friendships, and even in their businesses. So welcome, welcome, welcome. I am so glad to be on another podcast with you. And by the way, if you're just listening to me on all various podcast platforms, you could be looking at me too. You could be watching and listening on Spotify. On Spotify, you can see and hear me at the same time. But of course, too, you can um, join my YouTube channel and you can get snippets of what I've said here on the podcast. But on Spotify, you get it all, honey. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I want to get right into this content um, today. And I want to share uh, this letter with you. Um, we're basically going to be talking about a boyfriend that's a cheater, okay? Mm -hmm. that's, that's what we talk about. So you might want to check this all out. And uh, it's a not a long letter, but it's a little lengthy, you know, um, and I want to make sure we get it all in. But listen, if you want to send in your relationship questions, you can send it to me by emailing me at info, I-N-F-O, at wisecourtship.com. That's I-N-F-O, at wisecourtship.com. And listen, follow me on all social media platforms. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Instagram, honey. I'm on Facebook. I'm all over the place as Wise Courtship. <clears throat> and in some cases, that's Tony Henderson Mayers. And also, I need to thank um, Matthew Evans, um, and you can follow him on Instagram, and also Hijack, aka Sean Mayers. Uh, he does the beats and the music, and Matthew Evans did the singing of my theme song. And if you want to hear the theme song, if you're watching me on YouTube, honey, you getting that funky beat before you come on my YouTube channel. Mm -hmm, be getting down, to you. But if you want to hear my theme song. You got to come on to Spotify or any pla um, any podcast platform, you'll get a chance to hear that theme song. So without further ado, I'm going to bring up this letter and share it with you. I'm going to read it with you. I hope y'all got y'all little uh, wise courtship thinking caps on because this is something else right here. My boyfriend and I's two-year anniversary is coming up in less than two weeks. I would say we have a healthy, happy, strong relationship overall. He is not always the most communicative person and he has his mood swings, but all in all, we have a great time together. And I would consider our relationship a mature, loving one. At the very end of May, I found out he cheated on me. He took a girl home from the bar with the intentions of having sex with her. There was a makeout session for multiple reasons. The sex didn't happen, supposedly. We have talked for hours and hours, days and days, evaluating our relationship. He cried. I cried, to say the least. He was very responsive. As far as every time I bring it up or have another question, he is patient with me. He swears this was a one-time thing, Yes, he was drunk, not an excuse, and we both have talked about that. We have decided to work things out and try to get past this. I am really trying actively to trust, and most days I think I do, and then I get a bit of flood of mistrust every now and then. I just don't know how to move past it. 
I am trying and I feel like he is too, but I don't want to get my heart broken again. And I definitely do not want to be with someone who cheats on me. We are in love and care very deeply about each other. It just sucks because I feel like he's ruined something we had that was good and I trusted in. Do you think this really could be a one-time thing? Or do you think that if he did it once, he will do it again? So I wanted to share that letter with you and I wanted you to see the letter. Um, I copied and pasted it onto a Word document so it'd be a little easier for me to read. But um, I wanted to read that out loud to you. And since it was a little longer, I wanted you to see the wording and all of that kind of things. But uh, you know me, when I do this, these wise courtship things, honey, I got to break down the letter, okay? We got to break it down. Let me just um, scoop this letter over here. So this way, if I got to refer back to it, I can, okay? Mm -hmm. All right, so let's get into this letter. I'm trying to squeeze this over so I can like refer to it if I have to. I wrote down a couple of little notes, some things that I picked up. And I wonder if you guys picked this up too, because you are Pete, whenever, whenever you follow me with Wise Courtship, whether you read my book, especially if you read my book, see, because when you read the book, you'll know where I'm coming from. You know, my thought process process and where we're going. And I want you to get that thought process as well so that you will be successful in your relationships. Because when I give advice, I'm giving it from a, a, a love perspective. I want you to win. I was watching, um, a relationship expert because I love to hear people speak. I love to hear them talk. You know, I'm like just a big cheerer. And in the relationship realm, uh, for those who do the same thing that I do, I mean, I got a whole lot of friends, a whole lot of them. And we got a lot of male counterparts that give relationship advice too. But this one guy, man, he was giving relationships. Uh, you know, he was answering, well, he wasn't answering relationship questions. He was just like giving the advice out. And he was just really mean toward these young women. He was just really mean. So I knew he had an ax to grind, but you're not going to get that here with me. I literally and sincerely want you to win in your relationships. I'm coming from a loving place. I'm coming from a successful place as far as in the area of relationships, but also I'm not um, blind um, or, or exempt from being, have been hurt before and have had troubles and problems and it could easily happen again. Okay. I'm just trying to share with you some things I know to work. Okay. I don't give marriage advice, even though I've been married 27 years, cause that's always so iffy, but I can give you some great relationship advice in regards to choosing the right person and what to look for when you hear things, okay? So I'm not gonna give, uh, when, I'm, when I break this down, I'm not doing it from a perspective of just giving advice, okay? Because people, you know, they write in, they just want relationship advice, but I'm also trying to give you like a thought process, the three-step system of how you, when you hear things, how you should be basically responding, like, or it should at least alert you, okay, to certain things. So let's get into it, okay? The first thing I noticed in the letter, okay, she said her and her boyfriend, they've been together, um, you know, well, let me see if I can make this print smaller so I can, so I won't have to be going back and forth with this. Uh, but while I'm doing that, she wrote this letter about her boyfriend that she's been with for about two years. Oh, I don't think I could do it. I'm just gonna have to go back and forth. And um, their anniversary is coming up, okay? Ding. Okay, this one wasn't in my notes, but see, when I go back into it, stuff keep bubbling up. You have to go into your two-year anniversary and you got stuff going on already. Also, I'm gonna save that. This big point that I thought about first, I'm going to say that point for last. Remember that. Put a pin in that, okay? Um, just put a pin in that. I'm going to come back to that one last. But they said in, in less than two years, her, her anniversary is coming. In less than two weeks, her two-year anniversary is coming up. But anyway, she said that they are in a happy, healthy, strong relationship. But she also mentions mood swings. Did y'all pick up on that when I was reading that? She says um, he is not always the most communicative person and he has his mood swings now we all have bad days and we all have times that we're just not you know at our best 
But mood swings, that's a different thing. Okay. Mood swings means, you know, you have a high and you have a low, or it's just kind of coming out left field. And I, you know, that is something that would give me pause. Okay. When if I'm with you and I realize you have mood swings, because for me, I don't really like drama. Okay. And I don't think you should like drama. That's drama, yo. And I, I just don't get it with us, especially women, but men too now. Okay. And I don't want my wise courtship babies, my family to fall into this one. Why are you putting up with that stuff? Why are you putting up with mood swings? Like what's, what's going on with that bad days? Yes. Days that we don't feel that good days that we not all are happy, pappy. I get it. But mood swings, that's something different. And that caught my eye. Okay. And I'm not certain why that didn't catch her eye because before that she prefaced it by saying that they have a healthy, happy, strong relationship, but to uh, he has mood swings. That's not a healthy relationship. And if you guys, if you don't remember what a healthy relationship is, I addressed this in a former podcast. So go back and scroll through my podcast. And I talked about what a healthy relationship looks like. And unfortunately, many people don't know what it looks like anymore. They've been in so many bad relationships. They have no clue what a healthy relationship is. And somehow mood swings is acceptable. That's not acceptable. That's something that you need to be like, hmm, wait, hold, hold. Because otherwise you're going to spend your whole life on eggshells. You don't know when they're happy. You don't know when they're sad. It's like, ooh, that's what mood swings does. Not a bad day. A bad day is you come in, somebody's have bad. Oh, you got a bad day? Oh, yeah, well, you know, I don't feel too good. Or, or the boss said this or that. Or, you know, I was on social media and people did this. You know, that's a little bit of a bad day, okay? Everybody gets them. But a mood swing causes you to walk on eggshells, meaning you don't know if they're going to go off or not. You don't know if they're going to be mad at you. They're going to throw a hammer at you. You don't know. Okay. That's a mood swing. All right. So that's something that would give me pause. The other thing is, is that she goes down and says that, um, let me see, I'm gonna have to widen this a little bit. She also goes on to say that, um, you know, that they have this loving, mature relationship, but at the end of May, she found out that he cheated on her. Okay. Now I'm not the type of person to be like, yeah, he cheated on you. He a dog. And oh my God, I don't go into all those changes. Okay. Because listen, everybody has a fall from grace. People make mistakes and all that. And I don't think your mistake, you ought to be labeled something. You know what I'm saying? Like sometimes for a woman, you know, she has sex, you know, outside of a marriage or she's with one person and she goes and has sex with somebody else. All of a sudden she, she's a prostitute. She's a horror. Okay. I don't believe in labeling people for stuff they have done. Now, if you habitually do something habitually, I mean, you do it over and over and over again then the label you may earn. Okay. But when people make mistakes and stuff, I don't think we need to go off the deep end, but I do think we need to get our heads together and figure out what we are going to do. Okay. So she says he's cheated on her and took the girl to the bar. Remember that? And that he, he had intentions of having sex with her. He made out with her, but they didn't have sex. And then she says, supposedly. Okay. That supposedly, supposedly he had no sex. That right there tells me you don't trust what he told you. Now we're not going to get in on whether he should be trusted or not trusted. I just want to focus on her for right now. She says, supposedly. So if you don't trust what he says, then you, you're going to have a hard time moving forward. I'll put it that way. Sometimes you just gotta, you gotta throw your chips in and say, I can't move forward because in order for you to stay with the person, you have to, if he says he didn't have it, you've got to believe it. Okay. That's part of it because otherwise it's going to keep bubbling up as we see, right? It just keeps bubbling up, bubbling up, and it interferes with you moving forward in your relationship. That's your choice. Okay. My choice may be like, I don't believe you. I'm not going to deal with it. I'm going. Everybody has a choice. You whatever choice. But if you decide you're going to stick in there, you can't be dealing with the supposedly. You either believe him or you don't. 
Okay. And that's what gets us in a lot of trouble sometimes too, because we're like, you know, we're walking a tight rope with people, you know, we're, 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 um, we're, we're not all in and we have to decide if we're going to be all in or not. Okay. Um, and, and that comes from too, sometimes is that, that we can't make a decision what's best for us because we're worried about what the other person is going to do, or it's based on the other person's behavior. No, it ought to be based off what your values and what you believe that you need in your life, okay? I can't tell you what, what you need in your life other than I really hope and pray that you're going to choose healthy and happy and whole. But I mean, if you you say, hey, I can't be with somebody who cheated on me, that you know, that's your choice, right? You make the choice and you stick to it. You don't change your mind based off what somebody else is doing. But if you're the type of person to say, hey, I'm going to stick in there and we're going to work it out, that is your choice. You don't change your mind based off what the other person is doing, unless, you know, your life is in jeopardy or somebody else's life is in jeopardy. That's different. But you get what I'm saying. You have to make the choice for yourself, Okay. Figure it out and make the choice for yourself. So let's go into this a little bit further. Um, so she wasn't really sure about the, the sex part, but then she goes on to, um, uh, I don't know why I wrote this note. So let me go back in here. Let me see if I, it'll pop out. Uh, she says, supposedly, where's it supposedly? There we go. We talked for hours and hours on day. We cried, he cried. Um, he was very responsive as far as every time I had brought it up to answer questions, he was patient with me. He swear this was a one-time thing. <sighs> this is something that I think, um, people who deal with cheaters have to, to deal with, whether it's first time or not. I will say this, that for most people, maybe 90 something percent say it's the first time and they lie. <laughs> it's not the first time but for the sake of those there are some people it is the first time it is just absolutely the first time and they just got caught out there but I tell you it makes it bad for the people that are it is the first time because there's so many people they say it's the first time and it is not the first time and this is why you need to know in your mind what you want to do what can you live with if you can't get past um the fact that they were with somebody else and you can't believe what they're saying don't stick in there and then make them suffer you suffering and you know you don't believe what they're saying if you don't believe it was one time then move on if you believe it is one time then you need to go ahead and 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 be all i hope i'm making sense because i don't know maybe because i'm sniffing and all that kind of stuff right now today the the, the passion is not there on today with this episode because maybe because I've talked about it so many times, but when you make a decision, it ought to be something that's best for you. You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to tell you why it's just best for you in this situation. When I get to the last point, because once I make this last point, that last point changes what's the best for us. Okay. Um, but, but, but she wasn't sure if this is the one time you could tell in this conversation, all right, that she's not sure if it was one time. And you, you know, it, 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 it's an excuse that many people have used so many times that it's been one time that the people who really telling the truth, it's so hard to believe them because <laughs> you don't know if they the liar or the, or the one that telling the truth. All right, so let's go to the next one. Um, She has, um, so she's, you know, they try, she's trying to get past this. It's really hard for her to get past this. She doesn't know what to do. Um, but toward the end, she asked the question. She says, um, it sucks because I feel like he ruined something we had that was good and I trusted in. Do you think this really could be a one-time thing? Or do you think that if he did it once, he will do it again? I know that it's very popular for people to say, if they did it once, they'll do it again but that's not necessarily true. There are people who totally reform from their mistakes, okay? 
There's some people who take drinks, become alcoholics, and they get off the wagon and they don't make the mistake again. Okay. Some people fall down several times, but then finally they do it and they just, they stop. Some people on their first time go cold turkey. They, I'm not going to smoke anymore. I'm not going to, you know, um, eat all this sugar and get overweight and they stop and they, they just don't do it again. So I don't think you can take you know, there may be a lot of people that do it over and over again, but you cannot lump everybody into the same box. Okay. Let's not do that. Let's not do that. Um, but you'll go on some platforms, honey, and women be like, all men are dogs. But, and that's one thing I don't get. How come all men are dogs, but you, you got time to sleep with them? You know, especially the one that's calling them a dog. Yeah, that's a salah moment. When I call a salah moment means we need to stop and think about that thing. You know, people come up with these crazy advices. I was watching that guy again, and he he has such a poor opinion of women, but yet you told him you would sleep with all of them. I just don't get it. Like, if you think a person's a dog or you think a person is no good, why would you want to sleep with them? But I digress. Okay, <laughs> let's get back to this right here. So you, it doesn't mean that the person's going to do it again. Look, I want to go ahead to this last point because I don't, I really don't want to hold you. The last point that I want to bring up is that she's going through all of this with her boyfriend. Mm -hmm. Some of y'all don't get it. You know why? It's because we live in a world now where everything's so topsy-turvy. I'm about to go real old school on you, but some stuff with old school really, really works. That's why I get really irritated when people dismiss millennials, when people dismiss seniors, when people dismiss parents, when people dismiss teachers. People have their place. And, and anyone can bring some wisdom. Everyone brings something to the table and no one should be dismissed. And old school teaching should not be dismissed. Yeah, there's some things. There's some things like you're like, oh gosh, I don't know. But there's a whole lot of things. The reason why it was put in place is to protect you. Now, some people are not good at communicating it. I get it. Some people are not good at communicating it. But Certain things are good to be put in place by old school teaching. And I said, she's going through all this with a boyfriend, a boyfriend, not a husband. And I've taught this over and over again. We've got to learn the difference between a boyfriend and a husband. What do boyfriends get that, um, that um, what does a husband get that a boyfriend does not get? What does a wife get that a girlfriend does not get? And for some people, it's the same for them. It's the same. It's the same. It's the same. And by the time you finish getting hurt by all these boyfriends that you've given the same to, and all these girlfriends you've given the same to, by the time you're ready to get married, honey, it's just a day to dress up. And you go down the aisle with them and you give them the same that you gave all the rest of them the same and you leave and hop out of it just as quick as you did um, the, the boyfriend-girlfriend relationship. You is not to say that you don't give everything your all. You give every last thing your all. But there's some things in a boyfriend-girlfriend relationship that you do not give or do or put up with until you got married. And listen... I'm not saying when you get married, now the person can cheat on you and you can deal with these headaches and heart. No, 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 no. What I'm saying is, is that when you go through this boyfriend, girlfriend period, you need to use the wise courtship philosophy. You need to use the three-step system so you can pick the best person for you. And you will go through less of this. Why is that important? Because every time I go through drama, I bring that baggage with me to the next relationship. And when you bring it to the next relationship, it starts that relationship off on the wrong foot. It may seem like it's on the right foot, but it's not on the right foot. Anybody got a cousin or a little baby or somebody put the shoe on the wrong foot, honey, and they just walking like it's on the right foot until somebody points it out and said, it's on the wrong foot. Okay. <laughs> or until they feet hurt, or until they fall, all right? And then you got to fix it. It's the same thing. 
you want to get on the right foot. And when you are dating and you have these boyfriend, girlfriend relationships, some people get it so right on the first time it goes to matrimony. They stay together in there forever. But some of them, it's a learning experience. Okay. And so when you're sleeping with them and you haven't used a three-step system, you so blind and you so in your feelings that you can't see that they're a hatchet murderer. You can't see that they're cheating on you. You can't see that they're a liar. You can't see none of that, or you can't think well. And so now you run and Miss Tony, help me because I can't think well. Why? Because I was sleeping with them and I was, I'm all in my feelings. I can't use my brain. It's hard to use your brain and your groin at the same time. It's real hard, yeah. Believe me, it's hard. Okay. <laughs> And so I need for you to use the wise courtship three-step system and, and each person that you are, where you are there, you are interviewing them to see if they can make it to the finals and the finals is to be your spouse. And that's who you want to give your all to. That's who you want to spend your, your time with. That's who you want to give your body to and have all your babies with, okay? You want to do it because you made the right decision at the best time for you. There's no craziness going on. It may not be perfect. It may not be 100%. And maybe they even fooled everybody. But at least we know they fooled everybody, okay? And when they leave, you get your money and get your bag and move on, okay? And say, Lord Jesus, help me. Let me read this wise court your book again and do it right. OK, but you're not going through person to person to person to person. And every time you do that, it strips something from your heart. It changes who you are. That's why you got women running out around here bitter. That's why you got men running around here bitter. OK, they'll sleep with people, but they really don't like men. They really don't like women. OK, because they've been hurt before. And so I want you to get this thing right so that you won't have to deal with the stuff that I've just been reading about. You'll have a sharper head, like, okay, no, mm -mm. I ain't going to deal with this. Not with no boyfriend, honey. I ain't going to be dealing with this. Goodbye. Let me go with somebody else. Why are you trying to even work it out? Why are you even trying to go through all them changes? These are major flaws. If you as a boyfriend or a girlfriend can do this, that is a major deal breaker to even make it to uh to a marriage. Oh no, because if you do it at, at the boyfriend girlfriend stage, you darn sure gonna do it at the marriage stage. You ain't gonna change just because you put on some fancy dress or a tuxedo and put some rings and y'all danced and party and held up a glass of champagne. You ain't gonna change, honey, because what happens when you get married to somebody, you get used to them, and boy, do you get used to them. And you you'll be right out there doing some of the same stuff you did as a boyfriend or girlfriend. I got to go. But you can visit me on the web, honey, at www.wisecourtship.com. I'm all over social media um, as Wise Courtship or Tony Henderson Mayers. All you have to do is Google me. Just know that I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. And remember, I help you detect a lover worth living with. Bye. Are you subscribed to the Wise Courtship Philosophy? Then you need to get your Wise Courtship gear at the Wise Courtship store. Go to bit.ly forward slash Wise Courtship store. All the letters are lowercase. They make amazing gifts from children, adults, men and women, jewelry, hats, cell phone cases, t-shirts, and more. Represent Wise Courtship by going to bit.ly forward slash Wise Courtship store.